Good Good morning. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you, Julie. Excellent. And, and we and we can see you. Good. Sorry, uh, I have a new computer setting it up. Well, good. Uh, your audio is much better than last time. Excellent. Uh, we're still short of a quorum. Uh, we technically don't need a quorum to to uh to do the public hearing uh right now we have four members that i can see i just uh, signed on don oh very good thank you bob yeah. uh we now have a quorum so uh whenever you're ready we can uh you can read the preamble and we can call the meeting to order Uh, Julie, you're muted. Thank you. <laughs> uh, welcome to the October 14th Landmarks Commission meeting. Um, in compliance with notification requirements of Ohio's open meeting law and section 101021 uh, of the codified ordinance of Cleveland, Ohio, 1976, notice of this meeting has been publicly posted. All boards and commissions under the purview of the city planning department conducts its meetings according to Robert's rule of order. Actions during the meeting will be taken by voice vote. Abstentions from any votes uh, due to a conflict of interest should be stated for the record prior to taking of any vote. In order to ensure that everyone participating in the meeting has the opportunity to be heard, we ask that you use the raised hand feature before asking a question or making a comment. The raised hand feature can be found in the participants panel on the desktop and mobile version and activated by clicking the hand icon. Before you speak, unmute your mic uh, and you proceed. When finished speaking, please lower your hand by clicking on the raised hand icon again and muting your microphone. We'll be utilizing the chat feature to communicate with participants. The chat feature can be activated by uh, clicking the chat button located on the bottom of the WebEx screen. Call in users can unmute by using star six. All meeting activities are being recorded via the WebEx platform. These proceedings are also being live streamed via YouTube. All requests to speak on a particular matter via our website or, and email have been considered. We have also received emails from those who have provided written communication on a particular matter, and those will be entered into the record. We'd like to now call the October 14th Landmarks Commission uh, meeting to order. Mr. Pettit, please call roll. Thank you, Madam Chair. Ms. Anderson. Here. Ms. Bailey. Mr. Bonesi. Here. Mr. Kalikia. <clears throat> Director Collier. Mr. Dreyer. Here. Councilman Jones. Mr. Strickland. Here. Mr. Tarasic. Here. 
Ms. Trott. Here. Uh, Madam Chair, we have a quorum. Uh, we're also joined today by uh, staff members, uh, Carl Brunges, who is hosting the meeting, uh, Emily Spasia Schwiff, who is our AmeriCorps member, and uh, Nathaniel Hall, who is our representative from the uh, law department, who's filling in for Kevin Roberts today. Uh, Madam Chair, we have a quorum. Excellent. Thank you. We'll begin today by starting with a public hearing. We'd like to open the public hearing. Um, we will start with the first uh, uh, presentation on the project, and then we will open the floor for public testimony. Um, correct, uh, Madam Chair, I've asked uh, uh, Mr. Brunges to give us a, a, a shortened presentation on the, on the landmark nomination. Uh, the commission nominated this building on July 22nd of 2021. Uh, it had also been nominated in the past in 2009 and 1985. Uh, um, and I just want you to know that the, uh, that a public notice of today's hearing was published in the plain dealer on October 9th, as well as on cleveland.com. So, uh, I think Carl, if you want to go ahead and give us a brief summation of the nomination and and the reasons for the designation. Thank you. Uh, this building is important to the immigration of Slovenians to America uh, during the turn of the century through and their population here in Cleveland. It, uh, we are looking at this for age and integrity and for significance, the significance of the building. We have listed there are five different uh, values to this property um, for the cultural, economic, and social historic heritage of the city. Its architectural design it relates to the area of Waterloo and its history, and it's a very familiar feature of this neighborhood as well. Uh, the building was found founded in um, the twenties and built. Grand opening on January 1st, 1927. There were additions over the years, including the bowling alleys and the second floor uh, in, in 1947. The monument was uh, constructed in 1945. And then there's been changes throughout the years, um, including more recently with the removal of the glass block for new storefront windows. Location on Shiloh and Waterloo. Some photos from earlier. This is, I believe, from the 1990s. The monument itself um, has had the members of the neighborhood who had served and the 14 who had killed in action were carved into the stone. The rest were on bronze plaques. As the monument sits now, it's understood that the bronze plaques are in the building somewhere. Um, so they're not lost, but all the names that were on there have been documented. And these are the current conditions of the building. And it was nominated, as Don said previously. So. We are here at this point. Thank you. Excellent. Mr. Pettit, you have your hand up before we move on. Thank you, Madam Chair. I just wanted to point out that we've received two letters of support for the nomination today. Uh, one from Council Member Michael Polensic. And also, we have a letter from the Collinwood Nottingham Historical Society, and I believe that Mary Louise Daly is here to to speak to that and their support. But I just wanted to add those for the record. We will also share those with the owner of the building uh, as soon as we can. Excellent. Thank you. Then we will uh, ask for public testimony for um, we'd like to invite anyone to use the raised hand function that would like to uh, speak on behalf of 
in favor of the nomination. There was a hand and then it went down. Um, this is David Wagner. I'm not familiar with using the raised hand function, but I could raise my hand in the Zoom call. Does that count? Uh, that works. Go ahead, Mr. Wagner. Uh, thank you and an honor to be uh, on the call. And uh, I'm with Hannah Commercial Real Estate. And uh, as you quickly went through, you can actually see our sign is on the building. We've been actively working with the owner, Patrick Hawkins, who I believe is on the call as well, and um, inspired to know that there's there's continued interest and in, and this is a prominent building in um, in Waterloo. Uh, we've been collaborating and in discussions with the likes of people you might know, like Tom Yablonski and Jonathan Sandvik, who are great um, historic preservation folks. And just for the record, Tom's the executive director of Historic Gateway Neighborhood and the Historic Warehouse District. And we've worked together on dozens of projects to preserve uh, great Cleveland landmarks. And this is another one we'd certainly like to add to the mix. Um, the, the complexity might be here is that uh, Patrick's property encompasses seven parcels, five buildings, uh, some of which don't necessarily add context to this um, this singular building, which in the in the discussion of this uh, has had a number of additions. And uh, if this building is going to be properly uh, historically renovated, there's probably some life safety issues that need to be added to this property to, you know, with Americans with Disabilities Act and windows and, and whatnot. Th there are some things that will probably need to be amended here for this building to be uh, fully functioning in the future. Uh, and and um, Patrick uh, could correct me or somebody else could, but I believe that this monument, which is uh, a fabulous monument, may have been moved uh, to its current spot, which I would argue is probably, I mean, somewhere on the property would be fabulous. Um, but uh, this ends up being a, the reason that plaque isn't there is it ends up being a bumper stop for people that are pulling into parking spaces. So the, the latitude to move that somewhere else in the property to be properly um, preserved for future generations is, is a consideration. And I, I think just in, in passing, I think the landmark status is an honor and one that uh, I think long-term makes sense. Uh, Short-term, we're, we're actively talking to people about the use of the building, which in every case would require historic rehab and might, and I'm not sure what the landmark status would, would slow that process down or would impede that without knowing the full future use of the asset. So I don't know if they, if uh, the chair or anybody else can comment on, on those things. I think if someone's trying to talk, the mute is on, so I'm sorry. Um, I would, can start and then uh, Mr. Pettit can add as much as you know, needed, but typically the nomination doesn't you know, hold up um, any opportunity for renovation. Okay. Uh, it does allow for the pursuit of tax credits where without the nomination, um, you cannot pursue uh, state or national tax credits. So uh, renovation can occur you know, at any point um, with the historic tax, uh, or I'm sorry, with the um, landmarks designation or not, it's just the owner's choice. If they're going to pursue tax credits, then, you know, the, the um, designation is needed. Don, anything to add? Well, I would, I would just add that we, we, we always designate the entire property uh, regardless of whether there are later additions, we consider them part of the history of the building. Uh, and, you know, their disposition would be part of our re future review as, you know, once, if the, if, and when the building is designated, uh, I don't, I, I generally don't think that our process will impede your plans for the building or Mr. Hawkins's plans. Uh, uh, our our goal here is to uh, help ensure the 
the long term preservation of this building. Uh, it's it's probably eligible for the National Register, which means you would be eligible for federal tax credits. Uh, the local designation would make you eligible for state tax credits. Uh, the monument, uh, I believe it was this is this is the place where it was installed originally. Uh, its future may be in a better, more appropriate location in a setting that's more appropriate to, to its its history and its significance. But again, that would that would be part of our review as as part of any changes to the property. Um, so it, it sounds like we have we and you, Mr. Wagner, and the owner have a lot of a lot of the same goals with this building. Uh, so I, I would hope that uh, you know in my opinion, I don't think our 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 process would impede any any of any of your plans for the building. Um, and I'm I'm uh, wondering if Patrick, I think I looked and if you can hear me, I, I think I'm still uh, unmuted, but um, I think it looked like Patrick was on the call. but um, the uh, there, there's no question that uh, at some point in the future that this specific building should be um, should be nominated should be a landmark and and I believe 100% uh, will be saved. It's the it's the primary uh, corner, um, but the the other buildings um, I'm I'm not even sure they were part of the uh, Slovenian workers home uh they were acquired over time they're they're not immediately contiguous to the property if anything i would call them garages and the uh the landmark status i don't believe that those would go through a historic rehab there's a chance that they they don't stand another couple winters uh and they're not visible in any of the pictures that have been shown here so if the landmark status were to be on this specific building at this specific parcel, um, Patrick, that's up to you. And um, but I, I would I would think uh, strong objection would be voiced to try to put a blanket landmark status over seven pieces of property, many of which have no bearing on on the uh, original Slovenian workers' home. And and it does impede because it's an extra step in somebody's planning of the process. I mean, the reality is they could be sold off. Uh, this building in all of the pictures that you've shown is the original Slovenian workers hall. And I, I agree 100% that at some point in time, landmark status would be a great, great benefit there. And maybe Patrick has a different uh, or additional thoughts. I don't. Um, Maybe he's not on the call. For, uh, for Patrick to raise his hand if you'd like to speak. Um, Don, did you have other things or should we move on to uh, Mr. Brunges's comments? Uh, that's all I have right now. I, I proceed with, the, uh, with any anyone else who would like to testify. Okay, so we're going to continue on with um, people who would like to testify and if uh, the owner would like to speak, please use the raise hand function or raise your hand on the screen so we can see you both our uh, work. <clears throat> Mr. Brunges, um, would you like to speak next? Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, in response to the comments, we are only proposing the designation of two parcels for this. This will only be for parcels 1121729 and 030, which is the building site itself and the parking lot next to it because that parking lot would be important to the survival and success of this location. The rest of the properties are not being considered for designation, only those two. Are they consolidated or are these separate parcels? There are six, 029 has six parcels or six lots consolidated into one and 030 is its own standalone because it had a house on it back until the 1970s when that was demolished as part of the expansion of the parking lot. So those 
that's why we're only doing those two parcels. The other five, six parcels that are being mentioned are not in for consideration. Thank you for that clarification. Mr. Trasic, would you like to speak next on behalf of the nomination? Yes, thank you. And well, I, I just have one question, if I may, if this is the appropriate time. Once, if and when this designation uh, as a landmark is successful, is it my understanding, is my understanding correct that any subsequent change to it, I'm, I'm speaking specifically for the monument, because I think the monument is fabulous. Uh, and, and I agree that with some of the comments that the, uh, the location uh, may be less than optimal right now, maybe uh, they may want to move at some point in time. But is that something that would need to come back before this commission if and when this is designated a landmark? And if the answer to that question is yes, uh, would we want to consider placing in our discussion here that the movement of that particular monument would or would not necessarily need to come back here? I guess my question is the monument I think is fabulous uh, and, and I do appreciate the comments that Unfortunately, it does look like it's it's there at a parking space that would look to stop a car from from going to the building. But uh, I guess my question is for the monument: If we designated uh, a, a landmark, would they need to come back for that for the moving of that to another location? And uh, if they do, is that something we want to consider uh, placing uh, as part of this uh, as a contingent here that they would not have to? So, so this is the public hearing, Mr. Trusick. So I'm going to let Don maybe speak to this because we've actually already recommended the nomination for these and two um, elements. And can you remind us if we did it? I thought we did it separately. Or did we do it together, the um, monument and the building together? You're on mute, Don. Thank you. Sorry about that. Uh, we did nominate the two properties, the monument and the building together because of their history. Uh, if, we does, if we proceed with the designation uh, of these two parcels, the, the moving of the monument would have to come back to the commission uh, as, as an exterior change to the landmark property. Uh, I, I, think, I do think we would support that uh, given that that the move I assume would entail uh, a more public, uh, more visible location, a more appropriate setting for that monument. Uh, the I mean the other option we have is that we could we could separate out the, the two designations and treat treat the monument separately uh, because I think it is significant enough. But as it stands right now, uh, that that that's something we would we would want to discuss further. Uh, today we're just taking testimony on the on the landmark designation, and I think I hope that answers your question, Mr. Tarasik. But uh, I think uh, we should proceed with hearing more any more testimony that anyone wants to add. Hear from Mr. Trasek, does that answer your question? Oh, I'm sorry, I was nodding. I apologize. Yes, it does. Thank you. Okay, thanks. All right, we'll move on to others. I'd like to um, speak on behalf of the nomination, Ms. Anderson. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I just wanted to let everybody know that uh, this body has permitted uh, demolition of. Uh, additions and uh, other uh, buildings on sites that are landmarked. So uh, a future applicant uh, could come with a, a demolition proposal and if they can show that the, um, the uh, part of that building that is not contributing uh, should be demolished, we, we have certainly uh, um, allow that and allow them to proceed with those kind of demolitions. So I just want to make sure that everybody knows just because it's a landmark status that the portions of the building that are not contributing are not preserved forever. So that those are my comments. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Anderson. 
Um, this is David Wagner again, and, and uh, I apologize for jumping in if it's still appropriate. Um, and I'm trying to get Patrick to give me some insight as to whether he, I don't know if he's got uh, technical issues with his computer, but um, I think I can share this. It's a public forum. We have been in discussions with a national veterans organization about the long-term preservation of that statue. Uh, they have expressed concern that it's, you know, literally right in a parking spot that could be demolished with one bad push of the gas. And uh, th they were pushing us to have it moved to some place that would be what I would say more sacred and prominent. And it may or may not be in this block. It might be somewhere within a couple of blocks, but they're a nationally recognized veterans organization that has uh, an inclination to not just take care of potentially that, and this this is an early discussion, so I, I'm not prepared to share who they are, but they're, uh, they would be uh, very well recognized and they have endowments for things like this, which this building and this owner do not have an endowment for the the proper uh, care and and future restoration of that. So I, I would, I know that Patrick would strongly object to having to come back to another body to ask where this should be moved. I think it's, um, it's, it's really not a, a part of a landmark building. If, if the, if the landmarks com commission would like to designate where they'd like it to go now, I think that would be great, but to try to come back, uh, I, I think it, it impedes potential progress for the property. And Patrick and I have talked about that. Hello, this is Mary Louise from Councilman Plastic Shop. I know Patrick has been waving his hand to, to speak as well, but I just want to say a couple of uh, things really quickly. Patrick and David, we need to talk with the councilman, the councilman's office and the community before anything is done with that building and anything is done with that monument because that monument is tied to that building and the people of that community. So that's that's the only thing that I'm asking of you guys, please. Um, we had been in discussions early on and you know somehow we all fell off the radars. But uh, my the letter from the councilman and from the historical society has been entered into, you know, the record and that stands and I'll, I'll leave it at that. But I also believe that anything that be done with that monument must be either on the record or off the record or whatever needs to be talked with um, because it is part of the community. And if it's a monument designation, I would say that it needs to go back to landmark. Um, if landmark come back to landmark for anything that future holds for them. That's, you know, and that's both from the council as well as from the unofficial historical group from the community. Thank you. And I, I must be having some technical no. things on my side, so I'm going to ask. Can I speak, um, please? Yes, Mr. Hawkins, I believe you've had your hand up, and I think I just cannot see it on my side, so please go ahead. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, we have a lot of alignment here in terms of the goal for the building um, for the workman's home. Originally, when I purchased the property closing in November 2017, I committed to all the shareholders at that time that I would preserve the historical integrity of the property um, and also honor the history of the Slovenians that have uh, that have built it and used it as basically their community center. So. Um, no doubt about that. Um, and uh, we have had several offers of interest, new owners, um, that we've, we've actually ended the discussion because they had different, a different end game in mind. And, and I have no desire um, to have that occur to this, to this beautiful, beautiful piece of history. I'm a, I'm a historical preservationist myself. I've got a project going on in Euclid where we're taking an old uh, steel uh, shop that was built at 1917. We're restoring that into a new facility. My challenge here with this property and, and the reason it's on the market is, is twofold. One is uh, COVID, obviously. This is a 
This was a, a community engagement center. I've had two years of steep losses here with no way to recover the, the revenue and, and looking at just the maintenance of facilities. Um, if anybody's seen my tax return in Cleveland for this property, they'll know that I've had steep losses. Um, the only tenant I have, I inherited when I purchased the property. And if you look at current conditions, I'm not sure how to even get back to a historical look with tenant out windows in the bar that I did not authorize. I'm not sure what to do about some of this. The monument, yeah, that it, it bothers me, the location of it. I've got no problem discussing this with the councilman and with everyone here. It's it's literally a pylon. I, I see it get hit constantly. The parking lot has been turned into an after hours party center. It's people that are tenant, the tenants, I mean, it's not the tenants, it's the customers of the tenants. They do not respect the property. Parking lot's a mess. It's in the lease that they're to keep the parking lot secure and clean. They do not do that. I, I can't bear the cost burden of all this without some help. I've asked for help in numerous instances. I put my own money where my mouth is, but I'm totally underwater on the project and at the same time declining offers so that I can keep with the integrity of what I committed. So there's no there's no misalignment here and what what the end game needs to be, but getting there is something too. So then when we talk about applying for tax credits, et cetera, et cetera, that's a costly venture. It's not free. I need to I, I've had to pay for my property in Euclid. Mm -hmm. a pretty large cash outlay just to get there in terms of time and effort from legal counsel, et cetera. So I'm um, I'm also looking for some help here. So when I see this designation rule, I was not really, really informed that this was going to occur. I would have preferred to have been in a dialogue about this pathing before I just get a letter saying, here we go on here. Even this time I'm taking today, I'm supposed to be orienting two new employees at my other business, which is basically supporting the, the hall right now. So I just wanted to clarify my intent to know that we are in alignment around it. However, this isn't going to be simple if we just designate as landmark. I don't know what to do with the existing, again, lease that I inherited and what's been done to the property. And like I, you can just see from the external picture here, you know, the bar, which will be on the right hand side of your screen, it's it's already been altered significant. Don't know what to do about that so i would take any input or counsel on that um, as we move toward trying to establish this as a as a landmark and i do think it should be so mr hawkins we'd love to have maybe an offline since this is not the forum that we can give you any advisory um counsel related to the building and the tenants and the direction um in Right now, the, the purpose of right now is just the public hearing to speak on behalf or against the nomination. Um, but I'm sure you know, with Mr. Brunges and um, Mr. Pettit, an offline meeting could you know, maybe go in the details a little bit more as we can, if this process decides to continue forward. Yeah, so I would be speaking. I would be speaking for and supporting the landmark. However, I, I, I need to, again, we can take that offline, but it's for me to flip a switch like this and the timing of it, I, I don't know how I get there. Sure, Thank you. sure. Um, and yeah, I think an offline meeting would be appropriate to, to help you understand the process a little bit more and you know what it means to you as a building owner. So if you don't mind, if we can maybe arrange that in um, Carl and, and Don to keep this portion of the meeting moving forward, I would appreciate it. Certainly, thank you. Thank you. Are there others to speak on behalf of the nomination? Okay, um, uh, Ms. Peggy Carsey. Kersey. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I'm Peggy Kiersey. I am from Greater Collinwood Development Corporation, and we are here today to support this. We were, uh, we talked to Mr. Pettit uh, about this because we were unsure of the status, only to find out that it had been applied for years ago and had never been 
uh, fully enacted. Uh, we have had uh, some meetings with members of the community and uh, they have asked us to uh, stand in support for this. We fully stand in support because this is a, a prominent historic building. We've met with Mr. Hawkins in the past and um, have, have toured it. Uh, we uh, have had conversations with our partners about trying to save it when this has come up on the market. Uh, we haven't been able to work that out as of the present, um, but certainly have strong feelings that this does need to be landmarked uh, in addition with the, um, the the monument so that the monument can be maintained. Uh, certainly we don't like the placement in the parking lot. We realize that uh, it is open to vandalism and abuse. Um, and uh, so we just, we wanted it on the record that we're here and we will work with the owner. Um, we've had conversations with council and the historic society in the past. So I thank you for Excellent. your time. Thank you. Thank you for the, um, the testimony. Any others to speak on behalf of the nomination? All right. We will then move on to those opposed to the nomination. Uh, Mr. Pettit, I saw your hand up. I'm sorry, did I jump too fast? Oh, that, I'm sorry, I, I took it down. Okay. Anyone uh, to, uh, to speak who is opposed to the nomination? Um, Madam Chair, if I'm addressing you correctly, this is David Wagner once again. Uh, and I think Patrick and I have, have voiced that we would be in favor of this, but I, I, at this time, as I'm looking at our clock, we've had precisely 30 minutes more discussion about why this should be a landmark than we've had in the past year. And although we've had brief discussions with, with the CDC, th this is the most detail we've had conversation about this property. And I'd request that it be tabled until we've actually had the opportunity to move with the, the CDC to talk about this in detail. And, and I believe it should be landmarked, um, but there seem to be a lot of moving parts that being handled on a Zoom call with such an important property is probably not the best way to, to move this forward. And I would uh, strongly recommend meeting immediately and talking about how to, how to get this right. Uh, but I think a vote today is, would be premature because the, the there has been zero dialogue about how to the proper way to preserve this in the right historic manner. Well, this just for um, for your understanding right now, this is the public's hearing portion of the okay. meeting um, related to the nomination. It is not something that we are taking in votes on. Um, okay. This was reviewed at a previous meeting, though, for a recommendation of nomination. It was not um, any. Uh, that's you know, where you know, we left it that you know, we were are in support of the nomination. Okay. I'll let you know, so there's no vote or action that's going to happen on this property looking okay. at our agenda. Um, but I see Mr. Pettit and Mr. Brunges says uh, hands were up. Go ahead, Don. Uh, Madam Chair, I just wanted to reiterate what you just said. Uh, we're this is just a public hearing today. We're not taking action today. Uh, according to our code, the next. Our next opportunity to take action on the nomination is at our next regular regular meeting, which would be on October 28th. But I do support the idea of, of staff and the council office and and the and the CDC meeting with the owners. In the meantime, to just talk about this and 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 help them better understand our process. And for us to better understand their, their issues with the building, so I would I would support a meeting in the next couple of weeks ahead right. of our next meeting. Excellent, I agree with that recommendation. Thank you. Absolutely. Um, we will ask one last time if there's anyone to speak who is opposed to the nomination. Mr. Strickland. Thank you, Madam Chair. I would suggest that as part of that meeting, that a specific alternate site for the monument be discussed to just advance the understanding of the best placement for that monument on a permanent basis. And hopefully discussions can continue with the uh, veterans organization to uh, fund 
the removal and, and uh, relocation of that monument and the permanent maintenance of that monument. Thank you. Since nomination and design, you know, are two different things, I think, you know, we just need to be clear of that, that the nomination is not the final, say, the ultimate solution. You know, it, it gives that opportunity for two further discussion uh, more on each element. Um, so I just want to make sure we're clear that it's not, you know, the nomination is not saying you can or cannot do something or move something. And as Ms. Anderson said, or demolish something if that is something that you um, is an aspect of a property that is non-contributing. It just means that you have more avenues of discussion um, with all these groups, so that you know um, it, it, it. The ultimate solution is you know, something that's best for the property, the ownership, and the community. Um, I will ask one last time. Anyone speaking uh, who is opposed to the nomination? Okay, then we will close uh, the public hearing portion of our meeting for today. We'll now move on to our uh, typical meeting of certificate reviewing certificates of appropriateness. One moment, please. <clears throat> um, we'll begin with our first uh, applicant located at 2191 Murray Hill Road. Signs for McDowell Homes and Real Estate Services. Would the applicant oh, please use the raised hand function and tell us about your project? Go ahead, Mr. Pettit. Yes, thank you, Ms. Madam Chair. Uh, this was tabled on August 26th by the commission, so we will need a motion to, and a motion and a second to take this off the table. Okay, uh, so we'll begin with that. I'd like to ask the commission for a motion to um, take this off from being tabled. I move that we take this off from being tabled. Thank you, Ms. Anderson. Do we have a second? I'll second that. Thank you, Mr. Strickland. Thank Connor, you. We, to... uh, we need to do the roll call. Uh, okay. Ms. An Ms. Anderson? Yes. Uh, Mr. Bonesi? Yes. Yeah. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Uh, Mr. Dreyer. Yes. Mr. Strickland. Yeah. Mr. Tarasic. Yes. Ms. Trot. Yes. The, the case is removed from the table. Thank you. Thank you. We'd like to now ask the applicants to please use the raise hand function, unmute your mic, and tell us about your proper uh, project. Hi. Yes, I'm Jessica with Rough Neon. How are you guys doing? Good, thank you. Good. Um, if you could change um to page three, that'd be awesome. So we did come before the board and discuss this project last time, and there's um discussion about the placement of where the sign was on the building. So we did speak to the client and they would like to um move it based on the city's recommendation um to the side wall there. Um, so we did revise the plans and resubmit. So hopefully everyone's happy with the, the new location. Nothing's changed on the sign. It's still as was submitted as far as size goes. Um, so yeah, if there's any questions. Excellent. Thank you. Um, there, Mr. Pettit, I see your hand still up. Did you have additional feedback before we go open up the table for the commission? I just wanted to point out that the new location will not require a variance from the commission. Uh, based on the height and location, it, it, it now meets the sign code. Excellent. Thank you. Um, any other feedback from any other um, co committees or uh, people working for the city? No, then we will open the floor for the commission. Uh, do anyone have questions or comments related to the, the new proposal? Um, Go ahead, Ms. Bailey. Just to clear, um, the sign was removed from the center and now at this lo new location, correct? Yes, correct. Yeah. 
All right, thank you. Yep. Other questions or comments from the commission? Mr. Strickland? Thank you, Madam Chair. I just would like to uh, commend the applicant and the uh, sign company for working with the commission and coming up with a much more appropriate. And I think it it serves its function well and will not be a hazard in terms of uh, pedestrians walking through that area. So I uh, strongly support the uh, certificate of appropriateness for the sign. Excellent. Thank you, Mr. Strickland. Other questions or comments from the commission? I will just insert mine right now. Um, I you know, echo what Mr. Strickland says. I think this is a far better um, solution in its new location and, you know, um, appreciate the owner and the sign company um, listening to our feedback. Other questions or comments from the commission? Would someone like to make an, uh, an um, a motion? This Bob Strickland, uh -huh. I would to approve as uh, presented. Well, thank you, Mr. Strickland. I second it. A thank you, Bailey. Thank you, Ms. Bailey. So we have a motion. We have a second. Any further discussion? Right, Mr. Pettit, please call the roll and announce the results. Ms. Anderson. Yes. Ms. Bailey. Yes. Mr. Bonesi. Yes. Mr. Dreyer. Yes. Mr. Strickland. Yes. Mr. Tarasic. Yes. Ms. Trott. Yes. The motion passes unanimously. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Yep, have a good one. You too. Now move on to our second uh, applicant located at 4329 Lorraine Avenue, sign mural for Sharon Williams uh, retail store. Um, this project was also tabled on September 23rd, so we will need a motion to untable this um, project. Do we have a motion? I make a motion to untable. <laughs> Is it untable or removed from being tabled there, Don? <laughs> we're, we're removing it from the table. Sorry, that was my misstatement. Remove from being untabled. <laughs> you uh, want to remove? I think that's remove a double negative, but I think we okay. get the idea. <laughs> okay. So, uh, we have a motion. We need a second. All right. Is my motion correct or? Bob Strickland, I'll second the motion. Okay. <laughs> so we have a motion, we have a second. Mr. Pettit, please call roll. Ms. Anderson. Ms. Anderson, are you still with us? Uh, Ms. Bailey. Yes. Mr. Bonesi. Yes. Mr. Dreyer. Yes. Mr. Strickland. Yes. Mr. Tarasic. Yes. Ms. Trott. Yes. The case is removed from the table. All right. Um, would the applicant please use the raise hand function, open your mic, and please tell us about your project. Yes, absolutely. Can you guys hear me okay? Yes. All right. Well, my name is Kelly. Um, like previously mentioned, I was here a couple of weeks ago back in September to talk about the um, Sherwin Williams mural concepts that will be on the corner um, of West 44th and Lorraine on our brand new Ohio City store location. Um, I wasn't sure. I sent through the whole deck um, of information. Did you want me to walk through everything again as a refresher or did you just want to kind of get to the creative that we were having problems with last time? I think um, since the majority of the commission members were here last time, um, why don't you just highlight the changes that you've made since our, your last presentation? Sure, yeah, and I can give a, a quick refresher too. Um, my managers, Taryn and Andrew are also on the call as well as Allison Henney from Graffiti Heart, who we worked with. Um, she connected us with Evan Ladger, he's our artist for this. Um, and he did a fantastic job of, of 
concepting this and, and incorporating a lot of different branding and different Cleveland elements um, that we're really excited to share and very proud of. So this is going to be on the corner again of West 44th and Lorraine. It's our brand new Ohio City Sherman Williams store location. Um, and here is our old concept. This is not the current one we're reviewing. Just wanted to put it up here as a refresher of what we walked through last time. Um, the branding was over 15% of the total mural space. Um, and there was just a lot of different things that we unpacked in that last meeting um, that we addressed in our new creative. So as you can see, the branding's super, our, our branding, the Sharon Williams branding is pretty large here. Um, I know there was an issue where it was brought up that the doors, you guys would prefer those to be painted, um, have it framed in, in the space a little bit better. So if we go to the next side, we can kind of see how we address that in the second round. So here it is, the second concept. Um, wanted to start with the Sherwin Williams branding first. I feel like that was like the largest call out in the last meeting. Uh, we have shrunk this. It is now 25 feet by eight inches tall, 16.6 um, square feet total. It's a, about 5% of the total mural space now. Um, some other things that we did just to, to kind of uh, address those concerns, we made it feel a little bit more blended with the design, right? So before it was on a white background, it popped out a little bit more. Um, obviously, the, the lettering was a lot larger. There was a different treatment to the copy that was not uh, used throughout. So this time we picked up that navy background. We made sure it was fully framed in our little squiggly postage stamp treatment. Um, it's no longer the center of the design. It's kind of shifted to the right a little bit. And again, it's under 6% of the total mural space. So significantly shrunk that branding down. Um, other issues that we addressed in this round, I know the doors were a big problem. We didn't like um, how they weren't painted and they just kind of felt like they stuck out a little bit. Totally aligned with that um, and agree with that recommendation. Our artists came back to us with a great idea to kind of move that Cleveland proud language that we were seeing over the skyline to the door. Um, and that will be a fairly easy upkeep for us as well. I know we were concerned about wear and tear issues with the door, um, but the way that this was handled and the way that he kind of laid it out, very big block lettering, um, super cool message to be Cleveland proud. That's something we really wanted to uh, get through in this art. And then the second door, the, um, the walkthrough door on the right, picked up that navy blue background uh, just to make it blend in a little bit more. Again, these, these doors will be open and closed. They lead to the back kind of warehouse area where we keep our stock. Um, there's usually a truck that comes once a day. A lot of the times that door is left open, um, but when it's down, we'll have this really nice artwork on it um, that kind of blends in with the rest of the design and makes it just a bit more cohesive throughout. Um, other issues that we addressed, I know we were concerned that like the progressive field name and the first energy name and uh, rocket mortgage, this mural would outlive those names on the building. So we completely removed them um, from the art. You can kind of see where the, if you zoom in a little bit, you can see where the fields are. Um, the first energy is right below Williams on the right. And, and the other two are kind of between the two doors at the bottom. Um, still super recognizable as to what they are as Cleveland landmarks and important elements, um, but remove that additional branding um, of, of the actual stadium names, just to make sure it's a little bit more evergreen. And the last concern we address, I know I, I forget whose recommendation this was, but someone recommended to frame the art in the, in the wall space as opposed to making it bleed to the edges, um, which was a great suggestion. We made sure we were able to incorporate that this time around. Um, and then also on the next slide, I don't know if this was something everybody wanted to see, but I know there was concern about an existing Sherwin sign, right? Yep, you can see it on the left side of the building. Um, and having additional branding down to the right. So I just had our artists concept throw this on the wall, the entire wall. So we could kind of see how they work together, how far apart they are, um, and, and what, what it will look like from the street. So that is there for reference. You can't see the design as well, just because it's a bit more zoomed out. It's a very large building, um, but this one wanted to make sure everybody was comfortable with seeing both branding signs next to each other. Um, also wanted to talk on the next slide, I believe. Um, I just wanted to get, oh, these are the existing, sorry, it wasn't the next slide. Um, these are the existing branding measurements. I know we were also talking about the blade sign last time. I'm not here to, to speak on behalf of the blade sign other than the fact that I know it's going up. Um, that's a, a different team that's handling those uh, approvals and that whole process. Um, but that is a sign that is about 10 square feet and then this is the page I was talking about where I just kind of broke down all the existing branding that is on the building. 
right? So on the West 44th side, we have the linear frontage is 110 feet. On the Lorraine side, it's 37 feet, 10 inches. And then below that, we have all the signage breakdowns. So we have those two horizontal signs. They're about 28.5 square feet. Um, the blade sign will be 10.2 square feet. And then the entire painted wall on um, the West 44th side is going to be 56 feet and 7 inches. Um, total, that makes our branding 83.8 square feet on the entire building. I believe last time Shannon brought to the table that for a building of our size, we were allowed to have 82 point square feet or around 82 point square feet. Um, and then beyond that, we would need a variance. So while I totally understand based on the city's guidelines and the standards, we have to treat the entire mural as a painted sign. I know last time a lot of us were able to align that there are a lot of different public art elements incorporated in it. And our branding now is only putting us about two square feet over. Um, if, if we were able to just look at that and I just made a, left a statement that Shannon sent through um, about the entire painted wall. It looks like the variance would be 2.24 square feet total. If we were just to look at our brandage, not the entire painted sign. Um, so, yeah, those are kind of the changes that we made um, and, and the, the differences between the, the last mural and our concept now. Um, wanted to make sure all of those branding measurements were super clear. I feel like last time we were trying to crunch numbers very quickly and that was very stressful because I'm not good at math. Um, but wanted to make sure everything was laid out for us here um, and, and just right on the table so that we have all the facts and are able to, to discuss. Excellent. Thank you for the update on the presentation. Um, are there others to speak on behalf of the project from the city public arts? Um, is Tari with us today? Yes, Ms. Peters. I am here. Thank you. Um, I think that this is a vast improvement from what we saw initially and that they really took the committee's um, recommendations and, and um, came up with something that's that's much, much better, more mural like, but obviously it's still a sign because of the branding. So the um, commission would need to uh, grant a variance if this is going to be approved. But I think this is um, a much better outcome than what we started off with. And they followed um, all of those recommendations. And Julie, I believe it was you that um, mentioned the, the framing of the artwork to better fit with the architecture of the building. Um, so, I, you know, I support it as, a, as an artistic sign. Um, I think Shannon is here also, so she may want to say something. I see that, Ms. Leonard, or would you like to add anything to what Ms. Uh, Petrus just said? Uh, good morning, Shannon Leonard, City Planning Zoning Section. Um, so, because they removed the branding of the other um, buildings um, or the names, again, this is still a sign, um, but they did reduce it. And so, um, according to our sign code, because of the way that it's set up for a painted wall sign, um, obviously they would need like a massive variance because you're counting corner to corner. Um, but because, you know, the Sherwin Williams signage has been down to less than, you know, pretty much 5% of the entire mural size. Um, I think that's something to take into consideration that this is, you know, more um, artistic in nature. Um, and so, again, you all have the ability to grant the variance that they need, um, but it is uh, considerable um, to note that they did reduce the signage um, portion significantly from where we originally started. And that is pretty much, I'll take any questions if you have any. Thank you. Um, we will, I think um, with that feedback, we'll open up the floor for the commission to ask any questions or comments. Ms. Bailey. Well, I would like to, commend the um, team and the artists. Actually, I like this much better, especially the signage by reducing it. And also by changing the color background, it made it not look so massive. And I noticed that the font almost looked to the size as the sign on the left. 
So it's almost blending in um, to the sign on the left. So it doesn't stand out as um, uh, massive as the previous sign. So I really like this. Um, everything blends, the whole artwork blends together, the colors, um, even the blue. I'm kind of like disappointed with the solid blue door standing alone. I was looking maybe for some type of artwork in that door and the cleaning pile, I still feel that kind of too large, but you know, it's okay. But I like the whole entire artwork. It all blends together as one unit. So thank you very much for looking, you know, listening to everyone. I like this better than the previous one. Thank you very much. Yeah, I thank you guys all for your recommendations last time. We really took those back to our artists and we were able to, to concept something really cool that I think encompasses um, everyone's feedback from last time. So thank you very much, Ms. Bailey. Thank you, Ms. Bailey. Um, Mr. Strickland, questions Thank or you, comments? Madam Chair. I'll just reinforce Ms. Bailey's comments. I think this is a vast improvement and I uh, commend the applicant and the artist and their entire team in really embracing our comments and coming up with uh, such an improvement for this uh, mural that will stand the test of time for uh, as long as there are tenants there. So I'm very much in favor of this new concept. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Strickland. Mr. Tarasek. Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I also would echo uh, the comments of uh, my fellow commission members. I love this. I think it's terrific. Uh, I think the improvements are will make it make it really spectacular. Uh, and uh, off the record again, as I mentioned the last time, uh, I would encourage uh, the applicant to uh, to try and do something like this, something to display the colors that Sherwin William brings uh, to their uh, to their new downtown location to to activate certain areas of, of uh, that portion of the property that they're going to be they're going to be working with downtown. I think it's spectacular and, and I think it's, uh, uh, it's a really great asset here to, to this community and, and to potentially to the downtown community as well. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Trasic. Mr. Dreyer. Um, yes, um, I like this. <clears throat> I like this very, very much. And so I'm, I'm glad that, uh, that. That all the changes worked out. Uh, at the risk of throwing a wrench into things, um, you know, there's a rumor that uh, somebody is going to build a big building downtown that might impact that skyline that's that's painted there. Um, so I don't know if it makes sense to try to incorporate that new building or not. Uh, but it's just somebody actually made that suggestion last time. It's 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 not my original thought, but um, but I just thought I'd say that. Excellent. Um, yeah, thanks for the reminder of the comments from last time. Also, um, other questions or comments from the commission. I will just add my comments while I wait to see if anyone else has any questions. Um, I think this, I echo much of what has been said. I do think this is an improvement over, you know, the previous solution. I think um, you know, in sort of the separation of the two and using the doors as part of the composition, I think uh, has made this much stronger. And you know, your um, reduction of the or focus of the Sherman Williams logo, I think, has really improved it. Also, um, I do still personally would it prefer a border around this because uh, right now I think it's it looks a little jammed onto the facade, but um, that's my personal preference. Um, I always, you know, murals that go down to grade, um, you know, along a sidewalk that can get the dirt, the salts, the muck um, deteriorate much faster. So uh, that is just, you know, um, something to continue to think about, you know, the maintenance that you know, will be different across this mural when it hits a sidewalk like you have it um, in, in this area on such a, a busy road. Um, but I, I, that feeling does not hold me against, you know, that I think this is a, 
you know, a better solution than we definitely had before, um, but would prefer a little bit of breadth related to the architectural elements um, personally. Yeah, and I remember you um, making that comment last time. I think I might have interpreted it incorrectly, so I apologize for that. I think what I thought you meant was like framing it in our like postage squiggles and framing it on the wall so it doesn't bleed to the edges. Would you actually prefer you're saying to see it like not completely go to the ground into the ceiling like in a bit more? Uh, yes, my personal opinion would be to hold it off, you know, six, uh, eight inches from each side of the mural um, just to give a little bit of, you know, have it appear more like a piece of art versus a, you know, um, inserting it on a portion of the building. Um, so that's, yes, that, that would be my personal preference, but, you know, I think you know, what you've done is a, um, is a far better solution than what we had before. And it would just, you know, if there's others that wanted to speak related to that. Mr. Pettit, I see your hand up. I don't mean to be premature, but I just want to remind the commission that any motion to approve this should include uh, authorizing a variance to the Department of Building and Housing. Thanks. Thank you. Ms. Anderson. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to say that I agree with your comments, with the chair's comments regarding having a border and not having the um, mural take up that entire first floor area. Um, I realize this is a paint company, so it may be easier for them to maintain uh, the areas towards the sidewalk that could get damaged from the elements. Uh, but just the same, I think visually it would be a little more elegant if it was you know, just sized so that there is that uh, that mat, that uh, frame um, around this artwork. So those are my comments. Thank you, Ms. Anderson. Other questions or comments from the commission? All right, would someone like to make a motion? I make a motion. Go ahead. Um, the Bailey. motion is to the point um, to prove the um, up the the design as presented with the um, stipulant to um, have the um, to look at adding the framing, but take it to staff and um, to. Um, yeah, take it to staff and look at the sizes because I do agree to um, with the element because it is the concern with the weather, especially with the snow and the salt and things that it's a concern with that. Um, take it to staff um, with the sizes that the chairwoman mentioned, six to eight inches, and um, and also the color. So look at that for the framing, and also. Um, this also including the variance as well. That's part of the motion. Okay, I'm just going to reiterate your motion to make sure that um, Mr. Pettit has it. Your motion to approve with the conditions to consider a six to eight inch border around the perimeter of the mural um, to expose the the brick of the building uh, along with the. As part of that motion, you're recommending a variance for the square footage that is over the current sign um, code of, sorry, I can't remember exact square footage, uh, Don, was there two square feet or three square feet? There would be considerably more than that, Madam Chair, because the whole mural is considered a sign. I can give it to you if you would like the actual amount. It's the note in the comments was 702 square feet as a variance. Well, Ms. Leonard, from our you know, zoning side of things, what square footage are we approving here? Or is that up to us? So this is the variance. So let me just read. So the size of the entire painted wall mirror is 716 feet, square feet. 
Um, this obviously exceeds the amount of signage permitted. However, it should be noted that the Sherwin Williams team eliminated the commercial branding of other businesses in the area and reduced their Sherwin Williams branding within the mural to 16.67 square feet. If you only look at this 16.6 square feet of new branding plus the 67.27 square feet of current signage, that equals 83.94 square feet, requiring a variance of 2.24 square feet. However, the sign code requires the entire area of a painted wall sign for measurement, which technically requires an approximate 702 square foot variance. And so it should be noted uh, in the motion that and read into record that the applicant reduced the actual Sherwin Williams branding on the mural itself to 5.5% or less of the total mural space and reduced the size to 16.67 square feet of Sherwin Williams identification within the signed mural. Does that make sense? I've yes. shared that with uh, Mr. Pettit. So if he wants to add that, attach it to his um, uh, record, he may do so. Yeah, I believe I put a statement on one of the slides in this deck um, as well, just stating what we kind of talked about via email. I also just wanted to touch really quick if I can. I know it sounds like there could be some concerns about the wear and tear of it being too close to the ground and bleeding to the edges. Um, just wanted to note that for one thing, we are a paint company and the paint's really like right in the store. So um, our maintenance is definitely a plan that we have. Um, as well as the fact that it's our building, so it's definitely something we'll take pride in. We're not going to want this this mural to start to fade or look old um, or used with wear and tear on it. It's definitely something that I know um, our team, just because we concepted it as well as the um, the manager in this area um, and our, our our building managers are definitely going to want us to maintain this. So we don't have any plans to let this mural fade um, or look dirty or anything like that. I know that was just a concern that was brought up, so just wanted to address that really quick. Thank you. Um, since we're in the middle of a vote, we're going to keep going forward because we need to, to finish this portion of the process. Uh, but sure. thank you for the additional information. So Matt, we have. Sarah, I'll second the motion. Okay, thank you. We have a motion. We have a second. Uh, now we can open it back up to further discussion by the commission. Uh, I see Ms. Anderson, and Mr. Dreyer have their hands up. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, isn't the overall size of this mural going to change slightly if they do uh, frame it and lift it a little bit off of the ground? Yes, the size uh, could potentially change if they do uh, follow the, depending on what direction they take with our recommendation, if it's six or eight inches, the uh, mural size would get re uh, reduced. Then maybe we should not have exact measurements in the um, this action that we're taking. I would I, suggest that the variance could be conditioned so that a maximum of 702 square feet be allowed as a variance for the sign. That is exactly what I was going to say, Mr. Strickland. I think we just put the maximum on it um, so that we're, and we noted that you know, since the, as the, the per the zoning uh, department's memo related to the, the square footage. Mr. Dreyer, did you have addition, uh, anything addition to add? That was actually my question was whether we give them a variance and they at some point come and make the sign bigger because we've given them a variance, but if we're going to restrict it to a certain square footage that's stated, I think that 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 answers my question. Okay, thank you. Mr. Pettit, are you clear on the conditions and the full um, motion? I, I believe I am. I just want to make it explicit that we're asking them to, to restudy adding framing to the mural uh, six to eight inches on all sides, and that this will be sent back to staff for final approval. And staff will take into account the the new square footage uh, up to a maximum of 702 square feet when we sign off on the permits. I would Is agree that, with that. that. With that framing on the doors, was that would that be the like even including the doors? You'd like a six to eight inch push inside. 
Okay, so the doors will be fully painted, but you're recommending everything gets like consolidated a little bit six inches in. Correct. Okay. And you can work with staff if any of those, you know, um, details of the final solution. So, um, is this like a conditional approval today to get the variance, or is this something that you're saying we need to go to a different team to kind of work with? Uh, no, uh, uh, just to make it clear, the, the commission will be authorizing the variance. You will not have okay. to go to another body. This won't have to go to the Board of Zoning Appeals. Uh, uh, and the the motion is to is to restudy the framing. So it's not a condition as I understand it, uh, but any change would have to come back to staff for final approval. Am I am I clear on that, Madam Chair? Yes. Okay. Well, Ms. Bailey, you actually made the motion. Does that align with your motion? Yes, you don't have to come back to the commission. The staff to make the final decision. Okay. So we have motion. We have a second on we've completed our further discussion. Mr. Pettit. Please call roll and announce the results. Ms. Anderson. Yes. Ms. Bailey. Yes. Mr. Bonazzi. Yes. Mr. Dreyer. Yes. Mr. Strickland. Yes. Mr. Tarasic. Yes. Ms. Trot. Yes. The motion passes unanimously. Do you mind if I ask one question really quick? Um, so, because this was tabled last time, and it's now getting a little bit deeper, we're a little bit concerned about the weather starting to turn and get colder um, in order to to paint this full intricate mural. Um, if if we're if we agree to to kind of bump it in, we frame it with that six to eight inches on the outside, and we move forward with getting the signage variance, would we still be able to paint in April instead of or in the spring of next year, as opposed to kind of starting this within twenty twenty one? I, I, I think so. Uh, uh, according to our rules, uh, the work has to begin within a year. So uh, that gives you okay. plenty of time. I, I don't have an issue with carrying over the approval today to next April. Thank you. I just we just want to make sure our the coating we're using has like a 21 day cure time and has to be above 60 degrees. I don't want to push the limits of that. I know we've had very nice sun seasonal weather, but would hate to to push the limits and have any issues with adhering the paint. Um, so it's definitely something I think we'd be most likely looking to to start painting next year. Um, and I also wanted to mention as well that we were able to turn in with all the requested signatures the paperwork that you sent to us, Mr. Pettit. Um, I'm not sure if you've seen that or have that on file, but um, just wanted to confirm that we would be good to start whenever we need to, so long as we um, incorporate that recommendation. Yes, as, as the quicker you can get that that border study back to us, the quicker we can uh, we can sign off on your permit. Uh, we can do that fairly quickly, uh, uh, but we do need to see that 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 you've looked at it and and then know what your final decision was. Yeah, that, so that permit has been turned in. Um, I was working with somebody from our division office and they said that they turned it in on Monday. So I don't know how long that process usually takes to, to go through and, and reach your team. Um, but I know that that paperwork and that permit has been turned in. That's good. So uh, I, I can't. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I can't speak for the building department, but we can turn around our end of it pretty quickly. Uh, but Okay. And would uh, you just be reaching out via email once that you have seen the paperwork? Yes, and and we'll we can dis we can discuss this offline. Uh, okay, we'll Sounds we'll great. get it done. Thank you. All right, I appreciate it. Thank you all so much. Thank you. We look forward to the new addition in the area. We do as well. Thank you so much. Thank you. We'll move on to our fourth uh, applicant, located at ninety two hundred one Lorraine Avenue, monument sign for Medicare. Could the applicant use a unmute your mic, uh, state your name, and tell us about your project. Hi, my name is Steve Varlman. I am with Panzica Construction Company. I'm representing the owner, Dr. Carmen Popa, who is also in this meeting. And the proposal is for 
a monument sign uh, for this project that was already approved. Um, if you can stand, can you go back to the first slide, please? So this building is an addition to an existing building. It was already approved. Um, we have a building permit and you'll see us breaking ground on this project uh, next week. <clears throat> and um, this project, it had the signage as shown on the building currently as uh, the last time it was reviewed by this commission. Uh, next slide, please. This is the site plan. Um, the sign is at the top and you can see it highlighted in yellow, proposed monument sign. It meets all the setbacks per code. And it is located, as you can see, by the uh, entrance to the parking, between the entrance to the parking and the entrance to the building. Okay, next slide, please. And this is a design that um, Medcare has standardized um, they're already existing in three of her locations, her Parma Heights location, Garfield Heights, and also Sheffield Village. They all have this sign already installed. And so she wants to standardize on this sign. Uh, the sign calculates uh, to under 24 square feet per face, which is well under what's allowed uh, for this location. And uh, the way the sign is designed, the vertical element that says Medcare with the logo at the top is designed to be static, you know, remain that way. And then the, the face that says acute care, chronic care, preventative care, uh, that's designed that it can be changed out over time, not uh, frequently, but for example, during the, this pandemic we've had, you know, that may be changed out to say COVID testing or something like that. And one of the uh, reasons to standardize on this sign is so that they can have the same size panels for all five locations that she will have ultimately. And, um, and also that for maintenance of the sign, for um, parts, you know, the LED lights, things like that. So that's why she would like to standardize on this sign for this location also. Um, you can see the dimensions on there, uh, eight foot tall, by five feet, five inches total width. And then the other um, sign panel, I think that says two feet, eight or nine. I can't see it on the screen. And then on the edge of the sign facing the street, we do have the address uh, for the building. Next slide, please. So this is a rendering showing how the sign would look um, on the site. It is fairly understated, um, not very large in, in the scale of the overall project. And it blends in well with the context. And next, next slide, please. And this is a photo of an actual sign that she has installed at the, at the Garfield Heights location. And um, as I said, the um, same sign is installed in Parma Heights and Garfield. In the future, she will have an, a location in Berea as well. So there'll be a total of five of these locations in Cleveland. And you can see that the, um, the address is on the edge of it, the Medcare, with the logo at the top, and then the, the white panel that can be changed out over time. And that, that's all I have to present on this. So welcome to hear your comments. Excellent, thank you for the presentation. Um, we'll begin with uh, feedback from the local design review committee. Do we have someone present to update us? Uh, Madam Chair, I don't think anyone's here from uh, the Far West Design Review, but this was approved. Uh, their only comment, I believe, was that they don't like to approve signs that include uh, uh, all of the services that a, that a business provides as part of the sign, but, but it was approved. Okay, thank you. 
We'll move on to uh, others in attendance to speak on behalf of the project. I do see Mr. Council, Mr. Councilman Mooney. Um, can you hear me? Yes. Thank you. Um, I, I, I just think this is a non-traditional. This isn't your typical storefront sign. Um, but but I do, if you go to the slide, I do like that at least uh, this has a masonry base. In other words, the other signs you can see, there's a brick base, uh, some sort of a stone masonry base, which I think makes it better. Um, and, and I'm just fully, this is a nice project in a troubled area. I, I really appreciate Dr. Popa's investment here. Uh, we are desperately needed and excited to have this here and, and, and all that she's doing to invest. And, and I do fully support the sign. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Others to speak on behalf of the project? Um, Mr. Chair, Chair. Yeah. Yes. Go ahead, Mr. Dash. Oh, I put my digital the hand, digital hand up here. I don't think anyone saw it. Let me take it down. Oh, I just saw it. Thank you. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Um, I, I I agree with Councilman Mooney. I think that this this sign is 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 appropriate for the for the development it's going with. And the fact that uh, Dr. Popa has, this is part of her brand. Um, I think that also makes it very important. Um, same thing, the masonry base really, you know, adds something to it. But uh, Westtown, we we support this too. It's just it's just a sign that goes appropriately with with the level of development and the style of development. Thank you, Mr. Dasher. Um, we'll now move, open the floor for the commission for comments and questions. Questions or comments from the commission? Mr. Brunges? Uh, just a staff question. The, the rendering here does not show the masonry base. How tall is that and how much? Would that raise that MedCare sign up above? So the masonry base that you see in the photograph, that was an existing base in the Garfield Heights location. Um, if you go back to the rendering of the sign, it, it is not actually showing a base. It would be a small concrete base. It basically gets mounted very close to the ground so that it doesn't have much of a base. So it's more of a freestanding element um, and not really um, having a base that's part of the design of the sign. So what you're, you know, the way it shows in this rendering is the in, pretty close to the intention that it just gets mounted on, on a concrete base, but the concrete base isn't very tall. So it is, it is as we're showing in the renderings, it's just the guard, what you're seeing in the Garfield Heights location that had an existing base that an, another sign was on. And is it the concrete base in a um, like a tree lawn grass area or a grass area since it's on your property, or is the sidewalk extending from the the street up to your parking lot? So is it installed like in a field of concrete, or is it a field of grass with a small concrete base? Right, that's in, it shows as concrete that's as a kind of adjacent to the parking lot. That is all concrete and it's next to the bike racks. Again, all concrete adjacent to the sidewalk. Okay, thank you for that. Ms. Bailey, you had a question or comment? So you only just only have one location. Um, and that's at the main entry coming into the parking lot. You haven't thought of the opposite and when they um, dry. Um, can you go back to the site plan? <laughs> and I don't know what street that is, the opposite one. And that's what uh, we just only needed at one location, the monument. That's right. We're only proposing for one location because that's on Lorraine Avenue and then in when you enter the parking lot and you can enter or exit from either West 92nd Street or Lorraine Avenue, uh, we, we see the West 92nd Street. Um, that's more of a residential street at that point. And, and then that does empty out onto Lorraine Avenue, but we see the entrance on Lorraine as the main or primary 
identification and entrance to the project. Um, can we go to one of the sign um, that show the actual sign? I just have a question. Um, the, the other, the, yeah. Um, how much difference from the the flat sign uh, where it lists all the services? I can't tell because I zoomed in. It's the difference of the overall. Look like it's five feet five. I just want to know how much difference of the actual service sign. Is it maybe what three feet projecting out difference? In other words, the um, black sign might be what two feet in the remaining where it says the services might be three. It appears to be approximately three feet, three inches or so. Uh, how uh, far the white portion is extending out beyond the black portion? Yeah. I'm just curious at a sign difference. Any other questions, Ms. Bailey? Any other questions, Ms. Bailey? And um, for nighttime, is this lit up? And I didn't hear that. I mean, do it light up? You know. Yes, there are internal lights. It is a soft glow. It's not a very bright sign. The intention is for it to be somewhat subtle and, and classy and not very bright or, or loud. So at nighttime, the black one, the, 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 um, the white fonts probably light up. The, the white um, sign, the maybe the white sign, the overall lights up. That's correct. For the white portion, the white area is lighted, and then the black letters, you know, show as black against the white background. And on the black portion, that black portion is steel, powder coated steel. And the, the Medicare letters, as well as the logo at the top, those are cut through the metal. And each individual letter glows. Thank you. You're welcome. Ms. Anderson. Oh, sorry. Ms. Anderson, you had questions or comments? Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, how high up is the bottom E from the ground? Uh, well, that will be a concrete base and um, it'll be approximately 2 to 4 inches. So, so the concrete base is 2 to 4 inches and then there's maybe another, I want to say 6 inches with the concrete with the E. The bottom of the E from the surface of the. Um, concrete, the um, sidewalk. It looks to be about 4 to 6 inches from the bottom of the E to the bottom of the sign. Um, I mean, it's an elegant look. I'm just worried kind of what we were talking about with the last applicant uh, about. The any potential damage or uh, dirt caused by, you know, just the elements, the salt, the rain, anything splashing upon it and. Um, I know this is sort of unsubtle, but I I do have dogs. I worry about that too. I think maybe if it was raised a little bit, uh, it would prevent uh, it potential it potentially getting dirty, discolored, damage from uh, you know salt and the elements. We can make the base any dimension that you require. So, if you want to suggest a, a height, we can make it that height. You know, it might be better just to raise it a little bit so that the uh, sign does not get damaged by, you know, 
Cleveland winters, Cleveland rains, and you know, other other things that might happen with it being so low to the ground. I understand. And just so you know, it is a powder coated metal, which is very durable and should withstand the elements very well. I would agree with that. Um, Mr. Benazi. Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. My first thought when I saw the sign was like, I love it. It's elegant, but then I thought of a, a very good picture of my house, which is that there's usually about a foot of snow on the sidewalks come winter time here in Cleveland. So my only worry is that, you know, come winter time, maybe not, you know, it will probably be resilient to the weather, but you just basically read Medca, you'd lose the R and the E when it kind of covers with snow in the winter time. Um, I think that's the only reasoning for probably getting it at least 12 or 14 inches off the ground, um, just so that, you know, in our long winters here in Cleveland, um, people would still be able to read the sign. Um, not so much maybe the care of it. I'm sure it would last, you know, sitting in snow, but just for pure legibility, I think it should be at least, I'd say 14. I don't know why, but I like that number, 14 inches off the ground. Uh, thank you. I would on. I guess I disagree with that comment. Um, if this was a monument sign sit on that was sitting in lawn, then I would agree with your comment because of landscaping and or snow. But since this is going to be anchored into a sidewalk area, I am assuming that the um, the owner will be shoveling the sidewalks, uh, you know, so that people can, you know, actively access the the building entry. So I'm not uncomfortable with it sitting closer to grade. I think four inches does make sense just to provide a little bit of buffer and when you are shoveling that you're hitting, you know, concrete versus a the sign itself. Um, but I guess that's just my personal opinion. Since it's sitting in the sidewalk, I think. You know, it can sit closer to grade versus if it was sitting in a landscape area where the snow and, and um, you know, inland, uh, yeah, and you know, landscape could grow and sort of hide the sign. But that's just my personal opinion. Uh, Mr. Strickland, I saw your, your hand up and then it went down. I did, Madam Chair. I, did, I took it down because uh, your comments. Uh, mimic what I was about to say, uh, suggesting a four to six inch base uh, just to elevate the sign slightly so that when you're trying to maintain the sidewalk, you're not uh, jeopardizing the powder coated metal on the sign. But uh, just a, a, a small, if you're casting the base in port um, in place concrete, just forming that four to six inches above the sidewalk, I think, would make sense. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Agree. Mm -hmm. Other mm -hmm. questions or comments from the commission? Would someone like to make a motion? I make a motion. Go ahead. I make a motion to move the um, monument sign as presented um, to um, look at the lifting the sign slightly off the um, ground, maybe four to six inches um, with concrete, and just share that information with staff. Um, you know, for them to sign off of for approval. Okay, we have a motion with the condition. Do we have a second? I'll second that motion. Thank you, Mr. Strickland. We have a second. Any further discussion? All right, Mr. Pettit, please call roll and announce the results. Sorry, I was muted. Uh, just to, just to be clear, is 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 raising the sign four to six inches a condition of the motion or just a recommendation? Ms. It's Bader. recommended, but it's, it's a condition as well. 
I'll just, you know, I can agree that we will raise the, the sign to a, a six inch dimension uh, for the base, and you can incorporate that incorporate that into the approval, if if that will work for you. Thank you. Thank you. That's that's much less ambiguous. Okay. Miss um, <laughs> Anderson. Yes. Miss Bailey. Yes. Uh, Mr. Bonesi. Yes. Mr. Dreyer. Yes. Mr. Strickland. Yes. Mr. Tarasic. Yes. Ms. Trott. Yes. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you very much for your time. Appreciate it. Thank you. We will now move on to our fifth application. Hilton Hotel West Mall Drive, temporary public art installation, six outdoor sculptures by, I'm not even going to try to, I'm not able to speak well this morning, so I'm just going to not, um, could the applicant um, please uh, unmute your mic, announce yourself, and tell us about your project. Yes, good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Vince Reddy with Land Studio, and we're here to um, uh, get your approval. I hope for um, a temporary art installation uh, in the in the front of the Hilton is as it faces um, Mall B in in um, downtown Cleveland. So if you could go to the next slide, please. Um, the this is just some examples of other temporary installations that we've um, worked on in downtown Cleveland, and one of them, um, the one in the middle bottom, is. Um, actually was initially a temporary installation but it's it's um it's, it's been um popular and so we we've left it and and it's so it's become a semi permanent one these um the the installation that we're talking about at, in front of the hotel would be up we think for about a, a year maybe a little little longer and then we would um expect it to um go into a probably be placed in, in in some interior location somewhere. We go to the next slide, please. Um, yeah, this is the title of, of the artwork, which actually consists of six um, individual art, artworks is up, down, beneath, and around. And the um, Brooklyn-based uh, studio, Chowza, it's actually a, a, a wife and husband team that are, are working together, and they've done several um, projects like this one before. This is part of our um, of Land Studios Landform uh, program, which is funded by the Shar and Chuck Fowler Family Foundation. You could go to the next one, please. This is a picture of the um, Chowza. Um, it's actually Adam Freza and Terry Chow, and their collaborative is known as Chowza. And you know their their work is generally uses very like um, colorful um, abstract shapes and and uh, they're very experimental when it comes to um, materials. The materials that will be used in this artwork though are, are not um, they've experimented with them extensively before, so so they um, have been shown to be durable. You go to the next slide, please. These are just um, some president artworks by Chalza in different places. And you'll see what's being proposed for the temporary installation adjacent to Mall B is um, similar to similar to these things. So this shows the colorful um, sort of really plastic shapes of the of their um, their works. Uh, the next slide, please. These are um, so we're talking about a grouping of six outdoor sculptures. And these are the basic shapes that we're talking about, um, and they you know they make reference to geological forms in the landscape. They like vibrant and bold color, and I should also say that you know, when we first started talking about this project, which was uh, I think in 2018, it was before the pandemic and everything. And originally we were thinking that these would be possibly serve as play structures, but now that is not. Um, Part of their role, they will be very durable. So if if um, you know someone sat on one or or climbed on one, which is not our intention, they would be able to support that. And they are um, 
and they'll be in a setting though that will not be a playground setting so they they, they won't be um uh indi indication that they're they're meant to be um, climbed on or or used as play structures go to the next slide please these are just some clay models and this is some information about uh, the material that's used um they use a softened plywood as the uh is the main like uh, framing devices for for these and then they use a metal armature mesh and um they're filled with foam and then they the covering is is the most experimental of the um of the materials which is a is a weatherized paper pulp and then it's painted and and sealed and it serves as the skin of the objects and as noted they've experimented with this in the past and have had good luck with it um being outdoors in, in um, climates similar to ours. So if you could go to the next one, please. And this just gives you an idea of how the artworks are structured. Um, you see that the marine fur plywood is, is acts as a is a spine and gives shape to the to the object. And then it's filled with um, XPS foam, also known as blue foam. And then on the interior, the, the exterior is covered with a paper pulp material, which has a minimum uh, width of 1 8 inch up to about a half inch in thickness. Then it's uh, covered with a exterior acrylic primer and paint, and then two coats of exterior clear coat, top coat, which would be which was a protective layer. So we, and this, this, um, I don't think that's the correct name of this one. It's uh, the slug stuff. I think it has, I, I don't, I'm sorry, but we'll go to the next slide. I guess the, the exact names are not important. And this is just showing um, an, another one of the artworks, the shape of one of the other artworks. Uh, next one, please. This is the wiggle arch. Ne the next, please. Double wiggle arch. Next, please. And then there's two um, cloud clumps, a, a small one and a tall one. So if we could go to the next one, please. And this is um, incorrect at this point. This is this was the um, footing that we had hoped to use, which would have um, gone into the ground um, about 48 inches. But we're now having this re-engineered because we we can't go as deep as we had hoped in, in, in that section of the mall. So we're, we're going to instead switch to a floating slab um, anchor that will be, um, you know, we'll just pro project um, only uh, several inches in, into the ground. And uh, there will be concrete um, visible around the bases, which um, originally we hadn't, there wasn't going to be that, but um, we actually think that will be better in terms of um, lawn maintenance and everything, so that the structures would not be be hit by uh, lawn mowing equipment. So I think if we go to the next one, uh, this this shows the area in front of the Hilton. So which you you know it's it's a somewhat nondescript part of the uh, of the um, mall, so you might not have noticed it. You know you just walk by it when you're walking along the the, the um, wide wide sidewalk there along um, West Mall Drive. Next next slide, please. Just some other views of the, this is a view, um, you know, looking, looking uh, south um, in front of the lawn. Next, please. Okay, and this, this shows the locations where we would propose to place these artworks on, on the lawns in front of the Hilton. And by the way, we have we have worked with um, Terry Augusta, who's the um, general manager of the property, and she has been very supportive of the project. and And she is she's actually considered um, asking the artists to um, maybe produce a seventh artwork that would be in inside the hotel. You know, during the time that these artworks are up to to tie the whole project together. The next slide, please. And this shows how the shapes would, you know, somewhat appear. They're, they actually, you know, there's not color in these pictures, but the, the shapes, the objects are all very colorful. Then the next slide, please. These are the actual colors that would will um, be on the um, the artworks. 
I think that's all that I have. If you could maybe go to the next one. Oh, yeah, that's oh, if you could go back to the one before that, that's probably a good one too. Oh, I, I mean, yeah, that one. That's great. So that's really all that I have. Um, if any questions or comments at this time, then. Thank you for the presentation. We will start with any feedback from the local design review committee. This one did not um, need to go to design review. Um, they elected to just have the Landmarks Commission review it. Okay, excellent. Ms. Peters, would you like to, since you are speaking, give us your feedback? Yes, I would. Um, I love this project. I think that the juxtaposition of bold color, unexpected shapes and whimsy with the, bolt, the backdrop of strong architecture is perfect for this setting. Um, I think this project will engage not only um, hotel visitors, but just people just walking the mall. And it kind of puts me in the mind of the cracking art that we did um, downtown a few years ago with the little more oomph. Um, th these particular artists, they've done work all over the country, um, similar climates in New York, they've done things in uh, Florida. And for those of you that are familiar, they also did some very large scale works of similar material at the uh, Coachella Festival, the Music and Arts Festival in California. Um, I think this is a, is a fun project and I would love to see uh, a seventh artwork inside the hotel in the lobby or somewhere. But I, I think I, I like these unexpected shapes in, in such a, a, uh, a architecturally strong background. So I'm in full support of this and I'm happy to be able to get them to Cleveland if this is approved. Excellent, thank you, Ms. Peaches. We will open up the floor then uh, for the commission's questions or comments, Ms. Bailey. Um. I was just looking at the uh, the, the the colors. Um, it's interesting artwork. That's all I'm gonna say. Um, but I was just looking at the, um, the the colors. Can we go back to the colors? It's, and it's the colors that you're gonna um, put pick. Yes, these these are the colors. Uh, uh, Okay. Um, the next question I have um, it is intriguing. Meaning, I have been to some different locations downtown that has some toy-like artworks, and I have seen some of Doc's lilies sat on them, and um, because it's it's like a toy. Are you looking for, um, no, not you, but is Hilton expecting children and, and possible adults sitting on these items? Well, yes, that's. Because <laughs> it's it, intriguing. It, yeah. <laughs> we do, you know, we do think that people will be attracted to them and, and you know, they they're not really intended to be sat upon or anything like that, but um, the um, but they you know they probably will be, and they, and they're very durable, so they they'll be able to support the weight of people sitting on them. You know, we've had a similar issue with one of the artworks I showed you at the beginning, the um, corner light at Public Square. It's up in the um, in the uh, northeastern corner of uh, Public Square, and it's been there for a few years, and that was not really designed to have. Um, People sit on it or stand on it, but but they they do, and and it's you know it, it's held up well, and we we've just we've tried to discourage people from doing that. It, with this though, these actually would be um, durable enough for people to sit on them, and you know, and whether kids or you know maybe people after like a, a Browns game or something passing through this area, we could definitely see um, them people let's say interacting with them. Okay, um, unless you put a note on there saying do not sit on it or something like that. Because I was looking at the height of some of the um, sculpture you had. Some of them was like 36 inches short, and then I saw some of them that were five feet high. So that yeah. was my uh, question. And um, it, it, I'm, I'm assuming that the materials is slippery or it's designed with. They, 
you know, if it gets wet or whatever, it'd be slippery and that may can prevent people from getting on it or whatever. But I'm just wondering how that thought mind came on there. Because I have seen uh, people, you know, even small little artworks, even inside a building, people sat on things. <laughs> right. So, you know. Yeah, it's, it's always an issue. I just want to make you be aware of that. Yeah, it always, it's always an issue that comes up, you know, is uh, with almost any public artwork, you know, are people going to climb on it? Are people going to get hurt on it? And these, you know, these are not, like, they're not designed to be climbed on. There's not, there aren't any, I, I mean, of course, people can climb on anything, but, you know, this one, as you say, you know, they, the, the surface will be somewhat slippery, so it won't be, um, you know, it, they won't really lend themselves to easily being climbed. And as you said also, um, Ms. Bailey, the tallest one is um, it's about five feet tall, a little more than five feet tall, I think. So, but, but, you know, it's th that one, especially, you know, it's, it's, it's not one that you could stand on the top of. It has a round top. So you, you wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to stand on it or, or sit on it really either. All right. That's all my comment. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Bailey. Mr. Bonanzi. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I'm very excited about these artworks to be uh, hopefully coming to uh, the mall landscape. My only question was in regards to the um, footing that is going to hold them into the ground. And you said that you guys had a different construction detail on how they're going to be like kind of anchored to the ground. And my only question to that is just how much concrete would be exposed in seeing those, because I think some of the elegance of these kind of like objects in the landscape is that you truly do, you know, they're objects sitting in the landscape and you don't mm -hmm. quite un realize that they're attached to the ground. Um, and I think, you know, ha seeing a large, like, you know, large thing of concrete underneath them would kind of ruin that beautiful illusion of the object in the landscape. So I mean, that is my question of like how that detail would go or how, or what your expectations are. Like if it would just be a very minimal kind of, um, Yes, that's a good question because our, our original thinking was that there wouldn't be any concrete exposed at the, at the bottom with the original uh, footer plan. But now, is, if we're using a floating slab, there will be some concrete, but it'll, it'll be quite minimal. So it, it'll be, we think it might actually be advantageous in terms of um, uh, lawn maintenance and stuff and, and avoid, avoiding hitting the objects. But we think that, you know, the objects are so colorful and sort of um, visually arresting that the concrete will, I just think, be a minimal um, uh, presence at the bottom. But, but I mean, that's a good question because we, you know, we don't we don't want them to look like you know, objects that are set in a in a large concrete expanse. But, but I, I don't think it'll it, it will be that way. Okay, that's what I was assuming. But I just wanted to state for you know, just check in and make sure that because I'm assuming it's just going to be like larger. Expanses like right underneath where the spot is right, instead right. of like pins. Yeah. So, yeah, and the perfect. footers you know, will probably not be shaped exactly like the, the objects, but you know, yeah, we're just going to try to keep them as minimal as possible, the, the exposure of the concrete. Fantastic. Well, that was my only comment. Um, thank you. Thanks. Thank you, uh, Mr. Bonazzi. Uh, Ms. Anderson? Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, these, uh, these sculptures are very whimsical. They're very colorful. They're fun. Um, my concern is they seem somewhat out of context here. You have this very elegant um, modern glass structure. And uh, I, I find these, first of all, these other objects seem, you know, they're, they seem inviting to like children or people to want to interact with them. Uh, and to me, they seem like they would be much more appropriate in front of, you know, a children's museum or a park or a playground, amusement park kind of area. Uh, they just, to me, they, they just, they're very lighthearted and I, I feel like this area is has more, um, you know, more of a commercial serious uh, use, and I I feel they're just somewhat out of context here. 
Um, I think I would like them, but I think I would like them maybe in a more. More of a, a, an area where, you know, there are going to be families or kids interacting with them. I, I, I just think visually. They're a, a little too, a little too. Overwhelming in a way for. The um, rest of the environment there. So those are my comments. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Anderson. Ms. Petrus, you said you uh, had one additional comment and question. Yeah, um, actually, Jonathan asked one of them. I was wondering what the size of the um, floating slabs would be on um, each of these structures. And also, I think it's a good idea. I agree with Jonathan about them being flush with the environment, but I also commend um, the fact that they're going to have the concrete bases because you don't run the risk of damaging the structures with uh, lawn mowing equipment. Um, as far as I, I, I res respectfully disagree with Ms. Anderson, I think that um, in the earlier slides, there was a similar type of architectural backdrop for these, and I felt like they worked in the space, and I think they work in the space here, and to say they should be limited to like a place that families go to, although most families I know go to hotels, but like to put it at, at a children's museum, to me is likened to you have a holiday dinner and you stick the kids at the kids' table instead of letting them be with the rest of the family. So I think that that's part of the fun and um, of this or attraction of this uh, particular series of sculptures because it is such an unexpected shape and color with a strong architectural background. And I think that the way they're juxtaposed does work in that space. Um, that's just my opinion. Thank you, uh, Ms. Ellen Pet Petrus. Um, I would have to agree with that comment. Yeah, I think uh, one of my favorite installations has been the spiders and or the um, the frog and bird uh, installation that happened on Public Square because it was unexpected in such a formal environment to have these playful pieces of art and it's art. It's it's supposed to be a little unexpected and push you into areas that you didn't quite expect. So um, I personally like the this because it is on uh, unexpected and such a formal area of public square or of this area of the property. Um, and it's such a, a great connection between, you know, all the different areas uh, leading up to the lakefront. Uh, I do agree with the comment on the base and appreciate that you are going to look at more amorphic shapes for your concrete rather than just placing these, you know, very um, sculptural elements on a square piece of concrete. I'd encourage you to, to make them and uh, integrate them with the design so it feels, um, you know, additive, not subtractive from the overall composition. And my only other comment was you may want to talk to Sharon Williams for your paint versus Benjamin Moore. <laughs> yes. Because <laughs> obviously yes. they would be a great partner in this. Right. Um, right. So Julie, yeah, that's Julie, just those birds and things that you referenced. That was the cracking art that I was talking about. Some yes. people aren't familiar with what they were actually called, but they could melt them down and recycle them. And I like too that this has um, recycled materials when you're thinking about the environment sustainability. Agree. Uh, and thank you. I couldn't remember if that was the name of them or not. So thank you for uh, adding that because I do think that was you know, one of the more enjoyable um, installations. But my kids climbed all over those. So yes, <laughs> kids will probably climb on these and they should just be, you know, expected for this area too. Um, at least kids, if they're small. So uh, Mr. Bon Bonesi, I saw that you put your hand back up. Uh, yes, Madam Chair. I just had one final question, which is that I believe this is a temporary installation. So what is the timeline for the duration of the installation? Because I don't think it was mentioned anywhere in the presentation. Yeah. Yeah, we don't have an exact timeline, but we're thinking um, about a, a, a year or a little more. You know, if, if we could get them in this fall, then we might, you know, the idea, it would be maybe they would stay up until the spring of um, 2023, something like that. But um, 
So probably a, around a year is what we're, we're looking at. And then they will they would be moved to other locations, probably indoor locations. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Other questions or comments, or would someone like to make a motion? Other questions or comments, or would someone like to make a motion? Mr. Strickland? Thank you, Madam Chair. Yeah, I would move to approve the certificate of appropriateness for this installation of temporary art on the mall. Thank you. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Madam Chair, I think there were two. Uh, I didn't catch who that was. Prosek, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Trasic, for the second. Any further discussion? No, Mr. Pettit, please call roll and announce the results. Ms. Anderson. No. Ms. Bailey. Yes. Uh, Mr. Bonazzi. Yes. Mr. Dreyer. Mr. Dreyer, I think you're muted. Yes. Thank yes. you. Mr. Strickland. Yes. Mr. Tarasic. Yes. Ms. Trot. Yes. The motion passes six to one. Thank you. We look forward to seeing these installed in the near future. What's the timeline of doing the installation? Uh, we're hoping to have them installed um, by November, early November. So. Excellent. So within the next few weeks. Yes. We look forward to seeing the installation. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. We'll move on to our last applicant located in uh, the Southington Manor Phase 2, located at 3132-60 East 135th Street, new construction of townhomes. Could the applicant um, feel, please unmute your phone, Hi. announce yourself, and tell us about your project. Is uh, Dave, are you there? I'm here. Yeah. Okay, would you like to um, share the updates? Uh, yes, sure. Um, we've been to several meetings um, where um, there have been various comments. Um, which have been helpful. We've tried to build those in. I have a list of the things that we have uh, modified, um, included, whatever, um, from the comments um, that I thought I would run through, if that would be all right. Um, <clears throat> the, um, on the front of the building, um, the, there's brick below the window uh, we had it below the sill originally it's been raised to the sill um it looks better it's uh, clearly an improvement um also on the rear the uh the brick um was sort of halfway up um, um looked sort of like a half a column um that was raised um, basically to the uh, top of the uh, garage doors um, and looks substantially better. Um, along uh, 135th Street, um, the building that was built some time ago um, has some brick piers along the front. Um, and um, <clears throat> between those brick piers, um, there's some metal fencing. Um, we've added, <clears throat> we have, we've put in brick piers, which are meant to continue that same appearance. The bricks, the new brick piers will, will look uh, substantially like the ones that are existing uh, in the fence. 
uh, that goes from peer to peer will match the fencing that's there now. Um, originally, um, we had um, we had some curvature in the brick walks that from the uh, from the various units to uh, um, the street or drive. Um, it was kind of curved around. We suggested that we straighten those um, so that there was more usable lawn in the front. Um, uh, we did that. Um, I think that's excuse me, an improvement also. Um, the units when we first um, proposed this um, staggered quite a bit. Um, we still like um, them to be offset so we can pick up shadow and some um, changes the views a little bit as you walk past or drive past, uh, but they've been reduced. Um, <clears throat> the, um, we still have some shadow um, and some movement, um, which is which I think is good and looks attractive. Um, but it's been reduced uh, so that the buildings are um, more coherent. Um, uh, the units work better together um, than they did uh, in our original proposal. Um, there was a roof. Well, we had a roof over the porch in the kitchen in the back. Um, that's been redesigned to be less monolithic. Um, that shows up on some of the units, and uh, I think is an improvement there. Um, there was a question about the, we have the Hardy board on some of the um, well, pretty much all around. Um, there had been a comment that they thought people thought there was too much of that. Um, so. And that material, by the way, is what's on the existing building. Um, we've tried in a variety of ways to uh, uh, be a good neighbor, if you will, reflect uh, um, many of the features that are in the existing building that's there. Um, we have added um, um, some Hardy uh, lap sliding um, at the top of some of the uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Gables. Gables, yeah. At some of the gables, um, it reduces the volume of the uh, uh, Hardy plank that we had originally. Um, I think it adds more interest. Um, I think that's worked out well. Um, second floor windows, um, in some cases, people thought they were oversized, particularly in bathrooms and so on. So we've down, downsized those somewhat. Um, and I think they fit better on the facade than the, uh, than the larger ones that we had. Um, we had the existing building has um, siding and um, some vertical uh, pieces that um, hide the uh, joints basically between the party plank. Um, we had shown those dark and uh, dark brown. Um, and um, there was a feeling that it was um, starting to look like Tudor, um, Tudor look. That was never really our intent. Um, so we've changed the color, the, the, the battens that hide the seams will now be the same color as the, uh, um, the original siding that we showed. Um, and that, by the way, also matches the existing building. So it brings it more into formity. 
Um, we've added um, some windows and the garages, um, which um, are done, number one, to bring some light in, but also um, adding some glass so that we're hitting the 35% glass uh, requirement in the uh, townhouse code. Um, we originally showed the garage doors in uh, a dark green. Um, um, the verdict, pretty much everybody seemed to be that color was not appropriate. So we changed it to dark brown, um, which is probably a more traditional color. Um, landscaping has been added um, in the interior yard uh, areas. Um, ladders have been added to uh, some of the paved driveway um, that is, is existing, uh, was placed uh, when the original uh, buildings uh, were done in what I think was 2013. Um, those breaking up uh, will add some color and so on. Uh, they're done in a way that they won't interfere with the cars, but I think uh, they'll be visually pleasing. We've also shown um, on the site plan potential parking for guests um, um, along the uh, along the paved areas. I think there'll be plenty of parking there. Uh, if an extraordinary event was held by someone, uh, there's obviously also parking on 135th Street. So I think there's plenty of parking between uh, between those two. Uh, there was a question about snow. Um, it's everything set up so that it, it'll be um, plowed and deposited on the lawns so that the driveways and walks will be clear. Um, there was a question about um, fire trucks. Um, the, uh, the, the buildings are not set up for fire trucks to drive next to the buildings. I had a conversation with a um, supervisor from the Beachwood um, Fire Department many years ago, um, who kind of looked at me ensconced and said, we don't drive $500,000 trucks next to burning buildings. You know, I think we're beating what uh, is the appropriate um, response to, to that problem. Uh, Playgrounds will be located throughout, um, which is the way it should be handled. We've reduced the uh, concrete a little bit, so it'll be uh, more, more, a little more grass, uh, a little less concrete, help soften the, uh, um, soften the appearance, which I think is appropriate. Um, that's pretty much it. Derek, are there any other items you can think of? That's everything. Yeah, that's everything we can think of. Okay, thank you for the updated presentation. I see Carl's moving through some of the slides. Are these the updated ones, Carl, or are these the, the previous ones? Here are the updated ones. Okay. Uh, this is the, uh, the colors, the dark brown of the garage doors, the brick, which uh, will match as closely as possible the brick on the existing building. Um, the existing brick is no longer made, so we can't match it perfectly, but it's pretty close. Um, I think it's uh, more than adequate. Um, the drawing on the left just shows we've added some additional 
of landscaping. Um, the uh, drawing it's really photographed directly below that is um, um, a rendering of the entrance to, uh, is it not? Is that the entrance? It's a window. It's a window in the entrance. In the, um, so we're trying to bring in a fair amount of light uh, into the units. Um, the um, The uh, lighter color on the left is the color which you can also see on the buildings of the uh, of the siding. Uh, it's a cream, um, which is softer than a white, and we hope uh, more inviting. We would like the buildings to look uh, visually uh, very warm and inviting. Um, the other one is a picture of the of the roofing. Excuse me, um, the roofing that was used on the building uh, is still being made, and uh, we will match that on our building. So it's another tie to um, the existing building that's there, and and to the hopefully cohesiveness of the whole project. Okay, thank you for the presentation um, and the reviewing other the changes that you've made. That's really helpful. Um, we'll open up the floor for the commission for questions and comments. Madam Chair, just before we do that, I just want to point out that the Shaker Square Design Review Committee did approve this as presented. Uh, they're only stipulations were that they better delineate the uh, the lap siding in the gables on the drawings and that they provide a landscape plan uh, but overall they thought the project was much improved excellent thank you for that i knew we looked at this i forgot it was concept only last time <laughs> Excellent. Thank you for that feedback. Uh, now we'll open up the floor for questions or comments from the commission. Questions or comments from the commission? I guess I'll start us off and wait for others. I mean, I think uh, you have, um, thank you for listening to our feedback and trying to address them. Yeah, I think some of the modifications you've made uh, have been and listening to them are in the spirit of what we were asking for. Um, if I could just ask Carl, is there a large new uh, uh, perspective rendering that we could just stay on? Um, uh, that one, I guess. Maybe the close up is a little bit better to see the details. Also, you can use the uh, tools on the left hand of the WebEx screen to, to zoom if you need to. Uh, sure. No, that's uh, good. Thank you. Just wanted to, to see them a little bit more. But I think in concept, everything that we've seen you know, does uh, align with the feedback that we gave you related to the color of the garage doors. Um, the masonry and the piers, I was just looking at that, trying to, to see that, and then, um, you know, the details of the siding. So uh, I don't really actually have many questions or comments, except for what the uh, local did comment of you know, helping us understand where the lap siding is used versus not. I don't see it in the lower perspective. It says building one Southwest. Is it just on the northeast elevations? It's on the rear of the buildings. Okay. Um, it's the same color as the siding. It doesn't show up very well. Um, I don't know if that's a little better or not. Well, you can see. Yeah, that's just, the you can see it up at the peaks of the gables. Yeah. It's not on every gable, but it's on most of them. Okay. 
Interesting. I have a laser okay. very light. It does not show up very well. Thank you. That's helpful. Other questions or comments from the commission? Questions or comments from the commission? Or would someone like to make a motion? I moved up to approve the, um, the presentation um, design as presented. Okay. Thank you. We have a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second that motion. All right. Thank you. We have a second for the discussion. No. All right. Uh, and Mr. Pettit, please call roll and announce the results. Ms. Anderson. Yes. Ms. Bailey. Yes. Mr. Bonesi. Yes. Mr. Dreyer. Yes. Mr. Strickland. Yes. Mr. Trotz. Yes. We could give some approval to Bill. Ms. Trot. Yes. The motion passes unanimously. Thank you. We look forward to Ian seeing your project uh, move forward in the future. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Great. Great day. That concludes our certificates of appropriateness for today. Um, we'll move on to administrative reports. Uh, Madam Chair, I do not have a report today unless anyone has questions about anything. I do not. Anyone else? Madam Chair, there's uh, four meetings remaining for 2021. One in two weeks. We only have one meeting in November. And there are two scheduled for December, including Christmas Eve Eve. Just so people are aware of that for their calendars. Thank you. That's a good reminder. That's crazy to think <laughs> how quickly the end of the year is coming. Um, and we we also have our 2022 schedule ready, and I will. Forward that to the commission today. I think you I forwarded that. Don, I know you didn't can't you? wait. I or think you forwarded. Did I last... do that already? You did that already. Oh. Because I just opened it up this morning. Then, then, then I'm 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 ahead of myself for a change. There you go. <laughs> okay. Well, um, any other questions or comments from anyone? Yes. Um, would it be possible to get the applicants to uh, send in the uh, links for their presentations a little sooner so that we can have some time to look it over prior to the meeting? I know we got one late yesterday. I don't think we got one at all for the last meeting. And I, I do like to review these, you know, at least a few days in advance, and, you know, mull, mull, mull them over a little bit before uh, actually having to address them at the meetings. Yeah, I think I think it was staff's oversight this time not to get the presentations out sooner. Uh, we we did have them in the cloud as as early as last week, so uh, I should have sent them out sooner. I should have sent the link to the cloud. Uh, I didn't see your email until late in the day, so I apologize for sending it at nine o'clock last night, but. Uh, we do try to get them to you and we will do better in the future. We also try to get them posted on the website so that you know, they're available there, but uh, we will do that. We'll do better next time. Thanks, Don, I appreciate it. Thank you, you're welcome. Other questions or comments from anyone? I would say in, in related, uh, related to Carl's um, letting us, reminding us of our next meetings. Uh, if 
there is anyone who knows they will not be at any of the upcoming meetings, if you could let Carl and Don know sooner than later, um, there's always that discussion about the uh, meeting before Christmas uh, Eve, you know, if that meeting will be held or not, it's always dependent on the agendas and, but attendees also determine that. So if you could let you know, Don and Carl know, you know, as soon as possible, if there's one of those meetings you will not be attending so that we can uh, form the agendas appropriately. Yes, thank you, Julie. And I would also add that we actually have a fifth meeting coming up and that's the special meeting for Sherwin Williams. We still have to take final action on that project. So that, I believe that that meeting's at the end of November. Uh, but I'll, I'll make sure that's added to the schedule. I think it's the 30th. Carl, do you, can you confirm that? Okay, yeah, November 30th is our last Sherwin-Williams meeting. Okay, so let them know if there's, if you're attending or not able to attend that meeting also. With that, then if there's nothing else, we will adjourn today's meeting. I think this is one of our shortest ones. <laughs> So everybody have a great day. We'll see you in two weeks. You too. Thank, Thank you all. Bye, everyone. Bye. Have a good two weeks. Bye-bye. <laughs>